Hallo, hallo, hallo. Time has come for another problem. I hope you've all survived the journey through the tunnel from Oslo to Honolulu. One student pointed out to me something that I hadn't overlooked, but I didn't mention it, that the remarkable thing is that a round trip in a tunnel at any spherical planet or any spherical moon is the same as that on Earth, provided that the density of the planets and moons are the same as Earth. That's in fact a remarkable thing. Look at this result. This is the period that we calculated whereby r is the radius of the Earth and m is the mass of the Earth. But the mass of the Earth divided by r cubed is obviously proportional to its density, because the volume is 4 third pi r cubed. So yes indeed, take any planet, as long as the density is uniform throughout, which is a little bit artificial, take any moon, as long as it's spherical, and as long as its density is the same as that on Earth, they all have a round trip of 84 minutes. Anywhere in the universe! Isn't that nice? Okay, I now want to go back to the tunnel for once more. You see here the information that I sent you earlier. The first problem. And I want to expand on it a little bit now. It is much easier, I think, than the first problem. But it's a good time to do something easy because the previous one was not so easy. Yes, it was very easy for those of you who got the answer from the web, of course. But for those of you who had to really calculate it on their own, it wasn't so easy. So now I want to expand on this tunnel from Oslo to Honolulu. And what I'm asking you now is, what I didn't ask you in the first problem, what is the length of the tunnel? What is the highest speed that you will get when you go into that tunnel? And what is the highest acceleration that you will get into the tunnel? All information that I've given you in the first problem and all information that are in the solution you can use, of course. I looked up on the web what the distance is between Oslo and Honolulu along the surface of the Earth. You may not need it, but I thought I'd give it to you. That distance is 10,920 kilometers. So, I'm not saying you should use it, but if you want to, you can. So if you look now here at the information that I gave you before, I don't want to expand on it, because if you need any explanation, then you can go to the problem of the first. You give here the position of Oslo in latitude and longitude, and Honolulu in latitude and longitude. Here you see the tunnel, this is the center of the Earth. So now we want to know what is this distance, what is the highest speed that you will achieve, and what is the highest acceleration. Don't ask me, is my answer correct? Please don't. I don't even know whether I will post good answers or wrong answers, I have to think about this. For those of you who get the answer straight from the web, which may not be so easy, by the way, 
don't even post it. It's of no interest to me. I would like to see how you derive it. So at least give me a little background how you came up with those numbers. Length of the tunnel, highest speed in the tunnel and highest acceleration. From now on, I will post problems as much as that is possible within my other commitments on my Saturday morning, Eastern Standard Time in the United States. And I will then post the solution the next Saturday morning. And then the next problem the next Saturday morning. So there will be one every two weeks. I cannot predict for how long I can generate these problems. It's not so easy. I was thinking next time of doing one about special relativity. But I also realize that many of you will not even be able to touch it, and that may not be so nice. I'll think about it. For those who have never had special relativity, well, look it up on the web. I'm sure the answer will be on the web somewhere. Okay? I will see you again when I post the solutions. And that will be a week from today. And today, for me, is Saturday. Well, it's not when I'm taping it, but when I will post it, it's Saturday. Take care.